Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, today we're going to do a, an exercise uh, or activity where we sort of learn and get a, hopefully a deeper understanding of what the confidence level of a confidence interval actually tells us. Um, and so I'm going to need your help. Uh, we're going to run a simulation. Uh, but before we get into that, just some news concerning uh, couch potato brand snack foods. Um, unfortunately, they are currently embroiled in a legal battle uh, with the company Beyond Meat for using their, you know, their Beyond uh, name brand uh, for their four fake flavors. So um, until further notice, you know, um, I'll be doing these videos for free, you know, but that's just, I have a big heart. I'm going to do it anyway, even though I'm, I'm not getting paid for these. Um, as far as that goes, I mean, you don't have to be a legal expert to have seen that coming from a mile away. Uh, like I said, these marketers, I mean, a little strange. It's as if they're, they're not even really trying. Um, but anyway, they're in a little bit of trouble. Um, hopefully they, they come out of it and uh, hopefully they, they can, you know, continue to be supporters of this channel. Um, anyway, let's get into the simulation. So the way this is going to work is I'm going to send everyone this, uh, f this Excel file that you see here on the front, um, on the screen. And this Excel file consists of a population. All right, and there are 98 people in this population. Um, this is actually you. This is um, my students that actually responded to this survey. So that's the population. And ahead of time, I already know the parameter of interest. I know what it is. Um, it's the mean height of the students that responded. And I actually am able to calculate it because I do have the entire population. But what we're gonna do is you're going to simulate uh, drawing three random samples from this population, and from those three from each of those three samples, you'll calculate a confidence interval. So one for each, and all you all you will do with those intervals is determine did your interval capture the parameter or did it not. And um, as long as I get everyone to give me three confidence intervals, we should have you know, a ton of data to then look back and see, you know, what proportion of those confidence intervals um, indeed captured the parameter. Um, I would like you to use a 95% confidence level for each one of your intervals, and each one of your intervals will be of sample size nine. The reason I'm making this video is I want to kind of give you an idea of how to go about running the simulation and just and choosing a sample. So on the left column, the leftmost column, you'll see the identifier column. These are all people. Okay, I've hidden their identities, but they are now labeled with the number um, one through 98. Uh, and these are those people's heights. Okay, now how am I gonna draw a random sample? Well, I want you to use random.org. Okay, and you're going to click on where it says numbers up here, and you're gonna click on sequence, the option for sequence or sequences. Your smallest value, possible value, of course, will be one, and your largest will be 98 because there are 98 people in this population. All right, so those are all our possible values. Format in one column, fine. Uh, part two, go get sequence. Okay, so what this does is it gives you a list of those 98 numbers um, in some random order. And the good thing about it is they will not re repeat. So the, the way we're gonna select our sample is to choose the top, the first nine numbers. And then where you see sample one, you're gonna take those nine numbers and paste them into identifier. And I've set up a formula that should just call upon the heights, all right, of, of those nine people. And then you're gonna take, oops, 
you're going to take those nine heights and you're going to go through and construct a confidence interval based on those nine heights. Um, as far as the conditions are concerned, this is a random sample. The 10% condition is met. Uh, one thing I would like you to check for each one of your samples is check the random, uh, sorry, the, the nearly normal condition. Uh, so actually, you know what, on second thought, I kind of remember the parent population being somewhat symmetric. I'll probably add another tab checking the parent population. Um, but I believe the parent population is symmetric, in which case, actually, any sample size is going to be good to go. So no need to check any of the conditions. They're all met. Once you get your sample, just go ahead and build your confidence interval. All right. Um, so that's all I wanted to show you. Oh, yeah. One, one other thing. Now, let's say that's my sample. I go ahead. I build the confidence interval. I determine if my interval captured the parameter or not. Um, for sample two, I want you to generate a completely new random list. Don't just go to the next nine. The reason is, if you just go to the next nine, then that sample that you, that second sample that you chose was not independent of your previous sample. So I want you to choose three completely independent um, samples. And yes, it's okay if there is a person that exists in more than one of these simulations that's allowed to happen, right? If um, 30 different people went into the same population and randomly sampled people, um, it's possible that some of those people exist in the same, uh, in, in multiple surveys. All right, so um, please run three separate random trials. All right, that's all I have to say, if there are any other questions, if I didn't um, cover all the details, let me know. Um, anyway, good luck. Hope all is well. Take care. Bye.